Okay, this is the Augur call, October 2nd, 2018. Okay. All right, so like I said, we have a lot of updates related to new, or focus on new contributors and making the contributing process easier and uh, kind of make more sense out of it. And a big part of that was backend file restructuring, specifically the files that have, that contain our metric implementations. Um, and so here's, before I start, here's kind of an overview of our updates. So hey, hold on, can, can, I, sure? oh, yeah. can I get you to put this document in the auger minutes document? Yes. And so I'll put that link in here. Uh, which auger minute? Okay, I see. Okay, yeah, I wasn't sure if. Uh, yeah, please use that. And that way we have. So you just want me to put the link in there? Yeah, put it right. Right. No, 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 no. Just put the, just copy and paste all the text. Okay. Oops. I'm Sean. It's Kate. I finally made one. Hey. Hey, Kate. Hey, Oops. I'm home for the first time in five weeks. You know, during the middle of the week, go figure. I think every I think everybody's been traveling forever. It feels like it. That's for certain. Oh, Oops. That's not what I wanted to put in there. Here, just so you know, Kate and Jessica and Jenny, we do, we keep minutes on this. So we are recording at the moment, just FYI. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the link to the minutes. Okay, that's great. Um, I'm only going to, unfortunately, I'm only going to be able to stay on for about a half hour. And I um, okay. was just curious about a couple, and I, I don't, I don't mean to derail you guys, but I was wondering if I would be able to answer or ask a couple of questions just about how metrics are done on the overview. Sure. Um, yeah. I don't so, know if it's helpful for me to share my screen so that everybody's on the same page or. Yeah, definitely. Uh, right. Jenny, you're at Harvard, right? Correct, correct. This is, okay, so this is the connection. Yeah, I'm sorry. I, uh, I, I wasn't sure how this, this meeting would start, but let me go ahead and introduce myself to other people who might not know me. So um, I'm working with Jessica and Kate um, on the uh, second version of the census for OSS. And um, right now we're starting to look at some of our preliminary findings and we're really um, hoping to bring in, we're, we're excited about bringing in some of this data from Augur into it. And um, so essentially what I am looking to, to better understand, hold on one second, let me find the right screen for this. Um, I wanted to just better understand uh, how to read some of the, the, the metrics that are there. So hold on one second, I don't have this particular screen up right now, one second. Not that one. Okay. Um, that's a little much. Okay. So, can everybody see this? Yep. Yes. Lodash, very exciting. Um, some of the things that I wanted to ask specifically about were. Um, I know that you guys had said that lines, I think um, Jessica mentioned that lines of code by organizations, is that just forthcoming? We don't have them. We don't have a map okay. for this organization. We, we do have some default domains that we can populate and run against. So I think the trick is if 
if there's someone who's contributing with a Gmail address pretty heavily, yeah, that's not going to show up on an org. Um, at sure, least not right sure. now. But if you have a map of people and what orgs they're in for what periods of time, then you know we can give you a format to give it to us in, and we can load that into your instance. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. Um, and then as far as I was, I was trying to better understand how to read these particular um, this here. So it says total line change saying that seems over the that entire life project. Oh, okay. Yeah, those are still all 50,000s. Yeah, yeah, the numbers uh, for that visualization are off currently and I've removed it for now that instance isn't updated yet but what once i get that updated with the correct data then i'll uh i'll let everyone know okay so what's going to change uh well we're going to get for now we'll just get rid of the flyover with the data because it's not producing the data it's i don't know what it's producing yeah so for now we'll get rid of the tool tips um the reason for it saying 50,000 was a uh, was just so that the each data point would be visible because for lots of repos that we would run this visualization on previously there would be like one outlier data point that would kind of throw all of the rest off and mm -hmm. the ratio would kind of be too much and the data points would be like too small to see um, so there is a temporary adjustment for that, but we're, I'm finding a, a new way to do that and I'll get that updated as quick as possible. Okay. And then, um, the, as far as like the code changes and commits per week, um, and this might be just my own ignorance, so forgive me, but when you have like lower dash negative 69.697 uh, and then upper low dash uh, 2.857. Can you just help me better understand what I'm seeing here? Yeah, for sure. So um, those values, and I will make a change to make those uh, key names a little clearer, but those are the lower and upper bounds of the standard deviation band that you're seeing that's uh, shaded in gray. Okay. Um, and so that band is just one standard deviation from each data point. Uh, and those values that you're seeing are just calculated at that specific date. Okay. Did that answer your question? Yes. Okay. And I'm trying to see if there was another piece that I wanted to ask about. And do we have, is there a visualization or is there a different place where we can find the percentage of code, not just the number of lines, but just the percentage of code um, added by each author? So we actually have a pie chart in the works that we are going to include in our next release. And that is uh, very close to being completed. Uh, and we'll, it'll be a pie chart of the users for the repository uh, based off uh, both commits and lines of code contribution. So we'll probably have a pie chart for each of those. Okay. And then um, just for now for at least, are there, is there a place where I can find the total lines of code right now that I'm just not seeing so I could do that manually if I had to? Um, an endpoint that returns the total lines of code across all users for the repository. Right, so so basically until the until the nifty pie chart comes out is there is there a way that I can you know bootstrap my own? Uh, as of right now, uh, we don't have an endpoint that has the data organized like that. Got it. But in the coming just day or two, that will be up. And oh, okay. Yeah, so what we can let you know. Okay. Uh, as soon as that's available. Would this be a new endpoint, Gabe? 
that you would? Yeah, it'll be a new endpoint just with, uh, with the lines of code statistics organized into, um, well, so we plan to have contributors that have contributed less than a specific threshold to be grouped together. Um, and Sean, you may be able to explain this a little so, bit. Yeah, so one of the, we're thinking of it as a visual way to represent at the individual level uh, bus factor. So if you set a threshold, and I think probably the threshold will start with is 50%. So who are the people involved in the, the like what are the top committers who are responsible for 50% of all of the code that's been committed to the repository? And so we'll show the individual um, information for those people responsible for the top 50% and then everyone else with a number of total other contributors will be shown the rest of the pie chart. So okay. it's sort of really more like a half moon chart uh, half moon chart like that we have in mind. But some of those half moon charts could actually end up being more like pie charts. For example, if you have a high bus factor and there's three people each responsible for a third of the code, you'll have two thirds of the pie yep. end up by your top 50%. So um, I think it'll be a pretty quick visual cue for what your bus factor looks like. Fabulous, fabulous. And that's we're looking at that by the end of the week or early next week? Uh, so for the pie chart visualization? Mm -hmm. uh, Probably, probably the end of next week would be my Got guess. Because uh, our, our student that's working on that is at Grace Hopper in Orlando right now. Okay. And I don't expect she's doing any coding while she's here. I mean, maybe she is. Gotcha. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not expecting that she is, but it would be a nice surprise. Yeah, fair enough. But okay. On that, Jenny, would you, can you wait for the pie charts or would you like the endpoint that just gives the total lines as well and then you can just manually do it if it's looking if it's looking like it's going to be um if it's looking like it's going to be more towards the end of the of next week i probably would like the, just the endpoints but i could email if it's easier i could email somebody specifically with like the five that i'm interested in um yeah why don't you throw your email in the or I mean, get yes, string an email in the chat. And I don't know what the best <laughs> way to you know, get your email is, but I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll put my email in the chat because it's out yeah. there. Um, um, no, it's okay. I mean, I can put mine in the chat. That's no big deal. I just. Um, yeah, put it in the chat because then I can record it in the minutes and then we have it too. Sure. Here, I'll put my full name. Oh, I thought you were going to put not. You don't. I'm not going to record your email in the minutes. I thought. Oh, you were, okay. I thought you were talking about the five things, the five endpoints that you were interested in. Oh no. Okay. Gabe, can you put your email in the chat too? Yes. Gabe. Yeah. Yeah, because I think if you copied Gabe and I on it, then that would provide some assurance that we take care of what you need. Sure. Appreciate it. But those were really the only um, those were the only questions that I had, and I don't want to kind of take you guys too far off track of what you were. What I'd, you were. I'd say it's on track. Yeah. <laughs> I guess yeah, good good early user feedback, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. All right, all right. Well, I really appreciate it, and um, Sean and Gabe, I will email you. Did you put your email in the chat? I'm sorry, did I miss it? Uh, I'm doing that right. I just did that. Oh, there it is. There it is. Yeah, I was trying to remember how you, he's, his name is, he's got like a dot .im domain, and I can never remember exactly the way the letters of his name are structured across that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's a, bit of, it's a bit of a visual tease right there. It kind yeah. of messes with the eye. All right, cool. Well, I have those both. Thank you so much. And um, I, if it's okay, I'm going to duck out from here. I do have one question for you, Jenny. Oh, please, please. Do you have a, a sense of when you're going to be kind of bringing this data together as part of the census too? Like, do you have a timeline that that we should know about it at all? Or so um, we're looking right now. We're kind of coming. We're coming together with our um, steering committee 
on October 11th, just to get um, a bit of a sign off on the methodology that we've gotten to for right now. Okay. Um, and so I would say over the next month and a half, we would be um, refining the data and bringing it together with um, uh, some of the facade data that Jessica had given us um, for the more uh -huh. granular look, look, but then also um, some of this, uh, looking at some of the um, auger data points over the next uh, month or so as well. Okay. Hoping to um, get, get it released before the end of the year. Before the end of the year. Okay. Mm -hmm. So like kind of October is a busy month, it sounds like. Yeah, October, November, definitely busy. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Thank you. All right. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. I really appreciate it. And I'll be, uh, be in touch and looking forward to seeing all the great new updates. Thanks, Jen. All right. Thanks. 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 All right. Okay, so further things to discuss. Um, I wrote down a little overview of things to go over. We have some front end updates and we have the back end metric file restructuring that I mentioned and we have some loose ends before the, our next release uh, are all topics we can go over. Is there anything anyone else wants to go over or anything anyone wants to talk about first? Um, so I had one thing. Hold on. So I know that you've been making changes to the UI. Yeah. And I don't know, Sean was showing his Augur instance yesterday, I think it was on science, and it looked like that had been updated. No, it was on, um, it was auger.osshealth.io. Okay. So and that, that is running the most recent version of, of what we're doing. Okay. Is there a, like a way that you guys are thinking about the release of those? Just kind of in the sense of what I just saw on Jenny's screen was a little bit different than I think what I saw on your screen, Sean. Yeah, her screen has, um, I think I, I just um, actually logged into her uh, screen and did an update. So when she reloads, the, it should come back. Okay, it'll be more look like what you were doing yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Because I know you have a variety of, I don't know how many deployments you have right now with Augur. A lot. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> right. So, like, do you need to keep them all totally updated or um, is it? You know, I suppose that, that people appreciate that. <laughs> I mean, kind of where we're, what we used to do is we used to have Docker containers that we could just restart and yeah. with all the Google summer co-development over the summer. Um, we've been working towards, I've been striving for something that's like, and I think we're very, I think we're there actually. Um, I think we're at the point where we can release a version and then just put everyone back in a Docker container so that okay. anytime we have to update it, all we did, all we had to do is restart the Docker container and it pulls the latest version and builds it. Okay. Um, that makes a ton of sense. Just because yeah. I think the more instances that you guys are deploying, I mean, it's awesome. But like I kept like the risk, the risk instance, for example, like we kept a bunch of those at the version that we had before the start of the summer. Yeah. And I, because we just, okay, those, that's stable and we're going to leave it. And it turns out that was helpful because it let a few people tell us that, hey, where'd that go? Yeah, no, I, <laughs> I totally agree. I, um, so anyway, I think you get my point. It's just yeah. the, many, the many instances across the landscape. Yes, we should, we have, I, think, I think you're right. It's a, it's a, it'll also be more efficient for us administratively to, to track. Okay. Okay. So that was my only point, Dave. All right. And so, yeah, on auger.osshealth.io, it is on the most recent push, like Sean had mentioned. So there's some new updates that you probably have not seen before. Um, and a lot of them go along with the updates and uh, design changes you had suggested, Matt. Yeah. 
Um, so I will go ahead and I'm looking at Zephyr right now. On the auger.oss health. Yeah. What are you looking at? Um, I, you're at insights high level. Yes. So one major change we made was getting rid of the grouping by repo groups on this page because of the confusion of scope uh, that was going on on this page. So now this insights tab is specifically just on the insight scope and only has these insight panels um, that are across all your repositories. Okay, so the way I understand this is what I'm looking at here is insights, which if you clicked on groups, just click on groups for a second, all of these groups default, Zephyr, Rails, Comcast, Netflix, they all have a bunch of repositories underneath them, of course. Right, yeah, so we could click on Zephyr. Zephyr. Has a bunch of repos under Zephyr. So if I go, I know they come up. So if you go to, when you're, when you're looking at the insight screen, it's insights across all repos in all groups. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. So can you click on insights again? So if I had one group that had one repo in it, uh -huh. I would only see insights on that one particular repository just because that's all it has to generate. When I, in, when I was in Zephyr and I clicked on insights, there's no Zephyr sitting in this insight view. In the zephyr.osshealth.auger? Yeah, uh, it, comes, it comes up to this top level view with other projects. I don't, like I say, I was sitting in Zephyr. And I there's no insights data? Yeah. All right, I can fix that. <laughs> cool. That's, that's, that's why we have these calls. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right. So, so Kate, for your instance, is it just, it's only Zephyr as a group with Zephyr repos or are there other groups? Let's just, let's just focus on the Zephyr a, repos for right now. Cause yeah, that's where just, I have the panel of knowledge. There's things I'd like to compare it to, but <laughs> let's okay. focus on getting the data sound here. Okay. Yeah, um, Matt Snell had had built that for Kate. Uh, okay. With our help, but we did we did a separate separate instance. Oh. Okay. And so now we uh, also looked into re-adding some of our old evolution metrics that we had previously had in our old version, uh, just right here on the repo overview page uh, for easy access. Mm -hmm. uh, we just have some general ones about pull requests accepted, uh, just pull requests open a week, uh, declined, some issue metrics, and then some code development ones at the bottom. Yeah. Is there any way I can choose the window of time to be looked through or not? Sorry, the window of what? Time. Uh, no, no, not yet. Uh, okay. We had that on our old version and are looking to implement it on this one as yeah. well. When you say time, are, are you interested in scoping all of the graphs according to a time window? Or just yeah, actually, one. to some extent, I am because what I want to see is behaviors of releases. So I'm looking for being able to take and look at analysis by release. You know, are we getting better or worse by release? And um, that type of metric is useful there. Okay, so you would define the release dates and just look at the data in between those windows. Yep. Like for instance, I'd like to know okay how many. You know, how diverse was the contributor population in this a specific release to the extent that we've been able to map it, you know. Okay. One yeah. of my goals is basically to, to defeat the elephant factor. I want to make sure we start getting more and more people participating actively. 
Right. Okay, for sure. We will uh, look to re-add that feature. Cool. Thank you. The filter by date. Um, and another update. Uh, huh? We have added a bunch of evolution metrics to the comparison page. Um, and so you kind of get a bigger insight if you're looking to compare two repos. We How has this chosen the repos to compare? <laughs> yeah, I confess I'm curious here too. Uh, Apache or group and risk working group, okay. Somebody you, must have, Gabe, you must have chosen the, the ones to compare, right? Yes, I did. So and this little compare other. controller right here, you can select the group you're looking to compare, and then over here that'll open up okay. repos to choose from. So, click, so yeah. do that and click apply. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think I have to reset it first because I had the other one comparing. Okay, so right now I'm in... Apache, whatever. Yeah, right now it's just an uh, okay. overview of this repo. And then so we selected Hadoop, okay. Comcast group. <laughs> License coverage, I love it. <laughs> what was it? I didn't oh, see 13%. <laughs> Which for an Apache project should probably be higher, but anyhow. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay. So I mean, you, you did that choice on the prior page. Right. That's okay. Right. I think I missed that part when you click that button. Yeah, so basically the steps are selecting a repo to, to look at initially, uh, which you can do from either the insights page or just those repo tables. Okay. And then once you're at that repo's overview page, then this comparison option becomes available and you can go to compare it to any repo across any group. Okay. Um, and then some usability changes was just moving the uh, tab selection over to the sidebar um, just to get to the repo page or risk page and overview page, switch between those more easily. Um, and that is pretty much all of our front end updates for this week. Uh, and we're going to look into adding some of the things everyone has mentioned so far. Okay. So I'll say from my perspective on the UI, nice. like this is so much better. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's good to hear. Yeah. yeah, so thank you for your efforts on this. Well, thank you for Definitely. your detailed <laughs> uh, feedback and ideas, Matt. I think you did a really great job synthesizing the things from this call that needed to be done and it made it easy for us to just do them. Right on. Yeah, the outside perspectives help a ton because sometimes we can get lost in what we, like how we already know how to navigate the UI and it's helpful to get the different user perspective on ease of use because that's the goal here. Yeah, I mean, at this point, it's like easier to see maybe smaller details. Like I think how you had to set up comparisons was a little bit clunky. Uh-huh. You know, like how you had to do a reset and then go back and, you know, like maybe have a clear comparison button or something like that. But I mean, even the ability to see that that was a little bit clunky when you did it. Yeah. yeah great. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, that's a, I think that's a good thing because I don't think I was even able to see that before. Okay. Um, when I mouse over the commit author date, what should I be seeing? I'm seeing this black line showing up with no indicator. How should I be reading that chart? Which chart? Uh, the first one here. Lines of code by the top 10 authors as a percentage in the time period. This one currently has the data tooltips turned off. Uh, oh to reduce confusion on these fields. Um, but we're planning to re-add those to all the metrics once they're stable. But right now we don't wanna keep data in there that could confuse uh, 
or be incorrect. So those are turned off for right now. Um, but besides that, you can read each uh, data point mm -hmm. kind of as a ratio of lines of code added during that time period. Can you turn off the black bar if you have tooltips turned off? Because I'm guessing Kate was hovering over. Yes, Kate was hovering over, seeing a black bar, and wasn't sure how to interpret it. Yeah, and expecting something other than just black <laughs> <bar>. <laughs> Yeah, principle of at least yeah, process, so if, you, right? <laughs> if you just had turned off the black bar, I, there, there wouldn't be any further inquiry. Yep, that makes a lot of sense. So I think maybe turn off the black bar. And then also, can you go on the side? Right now, you have overview and risk metrics. Yes. So can you just maybe call it like overview metrics and risk metrics or overview and risk? Or okay, yeah. Yeah, some consistency there. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Again, these are just like super tiny issues at this point, right? Yeah, yeah. But we're... We're in the trying to refine things stage and make things uh -huh. consistent. So it's a good yeah. thing to point out. So it says when I'm mousing over, select the repo to compare to. It says press enter to select. I hit enter. I don't get any signal that it's been selected. Um, same with oh. Zephyr. So I'm, like, I'm trying to select between Zephyr and Wes since these are two active repos within the, re within the ecosystem. So I was going to look at sites if I could look at those too. Okay, yeah, sorry, that's uh, not very clear. You, you just have to, oh wait, you have them selected? I'm trying to select them and they're not selecting. Okay, sorry, yeah, uh, you won't need to press enter, you just need to click on the each bar. And so I realize that's confusing too. And can you make it show up in that top thing where it yeah. says select group? So if you click on Apache, so like right, click the down arrow. Like if you click on anything of it, yeah, click on, like make it say Apache at the top there. Yeah, make it say up there. Uh, yes, we can, it, and it says that once you click off of it, but. Uh, okay, so yeah. it, it's a minor glitch, but I suspect that we've got a, a browser issue because I can't even get to shade when I click on it. It just doesn't take the click. Oh, well, let me, I'll try. What are you using? Firefox? Uh, Chrome. Chrome? Mm hmm Which instance are you on, Kate? Sure, let me just check. Uh, about Google Chrome. I'm running on my Mac. Uh, 7603809.132. In the URL bar, does it say auger.osshealth.io or is that the zephyr.osshealth? It's auger.osshealth.zephyr. Want me to just quickly screen share and show you what I'm seeing? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay, no worries. Yeah, that sounds like it may be a browser issue. That's kind of what I started thinking, but let's move. Move the image off to the side. Yeah, I selected the Zephyr, but when I go to select the repo, I'm trying to select West. I could put, click on it, nothing happens. I hit enter, again, nothing happens. Space bar, nothing happens. And yeah. then I had wanted to try to do Zephyr against it. Enter to select. I, no, you know, nothing's happening for me. Okay, yeah, very strange. We I'll look into fixing that. I'm, and yeah. that's a browser issue. I think it's probably a browser issue. I actually be curious if you wanted to try to do it and see what happens, because I know that data. But yeah. Huh. All right. We'll we'll look into a way around that. Um, cool. Because we we don't want to need to be browser specific or anything like that. So I have one thing. I'm going to share my screen now. All right. Um, let's see. Well, the other thing I was just noticing is that the polls and reviews basically end in June, and other things are ending, you know, currently. 
what's the ra what's the rationale? Um, the rationale yeah. might be that um, I need to just update your data. Okay. <laughs> I'm looking at that right. I'm looking at that right now. Okay. Uh, cool. I'm talking about this kind of stuff, Kate. Like. Uh, let me look. Yeah, I think there's some. I think there's actually some data collection uh, uh, fixes that we made. Yeah. Like I, I, okay. I this. Yeah. Well, if you could do Zephyr Artos with Zephyr and then with West. Yeah. That's the one I'm sure curious to actually see. Because so you should see. We did the overview. Yeah. Of the reset. Uh huh. I learned that this is the way to do it. And then yeah. select which one? Zephyr. And okay. then uh, take West. West. Have I gone past it? You might want to actually look at alphabetizing those. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, that's here it is. That's there a good is. idea. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. alphabetical repos. Well, it makes it easier to find. <laughs> so yeah, so there we have West starting up against this upper step. So but, this is yeah. West here. This is West, yeah. So can you? Uh, my comment was going to be on these. Um, this legend. Uh huh. Can you, can you just call one of them like Zephyr? Well, what, what are we comparing here? RTOS and West. Yeah, West is effectively the build system to work with Zephyr, and they moved a lot of stuff so they could do multi repos properly. Okay. And so what we've got is we don't have the data, I guess, to the same point on both, which is why we got those gaps, I guess. And then same the here, like where, yeah. where is RTOS? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, I see. We'll, we'll get that legend more consistent. It might be easier to be, because sometimes when I'm doing comparisons, it's that it's basically the whole repo name, and it just gets kind of long and weird. And, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It's just a little hard to track, that's all. Okay. So oh, this is cool. I say, I'm just, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm wanting to get it to the stage where I can turn some of my team, you know, the teams loose on it and ask them about things and not cause problems for you guys in that sense. Yeah, yeah. Totally. no, this is very helpful, Kate. I mean, we want this yeah. kind of feedback because if you're trying to use it and you can't use it, then it tells us yeah. what to build next. So like say, happy to see the license coverage sitting there with 73% makes me question now what's not showing up, but that's okay. And um, we're working on an SBOM that will give us more detail. And when I say we, I mean Matt Snell is working on an SBOM that will give us more detail. Very cool, Matt. And, and Honestly, mind, um, let me just say one thing. Keep in mind, let me say one thing. Keep in mind, Kate, the license coverage, I mean, that's NOMOS. So there may be some non-detections occurring in there too. It probably. So. It probably, probably is not. I, should be identify detecting the identifiers as long as it's identifying the FPX identifiers. We're pretty close. Okay. I'm sorry, Matt. No problem. I was just saying that the license coverage is normally somewhere from like 13 to 30 percent. So I think you guys are doing just fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're aiming for pretty much to 100 percent, but it's you know certain files don't make sense to have coverage in. So it's just a question of you know um, how how can, the, I guess the next stage is you know drilling down. And how the drilling down can happen over time. But yeah. I like that it's got the CI best practices under risk. Um, and I, and I think <clears throat> when we've talked before, Kate, I think it's been the commits that is the, your first interest in being able to drill down so that you can essentially click on a person's commit stream and then see the cycle of that individual's commits, for example. Yeah, or where it's got the license declared. Mm -hmm. um, You've got the notes found by anomalous. I think actually what might be more useful there is the count of them. the license count. Yep. I know we've talked about that. <clears throat> and I think, I think in the risk meeting, we said, well, you can get a license count by eyeballing the, the, the enumeration of licenses that we provide, but I don't, it's certainly not hard to provide a license count. I'm just sharing another yeah, conversation. No, uh, so uh, I'll, I'll tell you like right off, the bulk of all the licenses you should be seeing here are Apache, and with seeing right. this, all this, just you know, all these numbers, it would 
make me like make a lawyer go bleh. So would it be? And then <laughs> it's a question of where all these are located. Yeah, I've, we, we've in, talked in, about that too. Um, I think well, maybe in this meeting before, but we've talked about being able to see like a, maybe a tree view of where the license is coming from in the tree yeah. or um, what hierarchical kind of way that it's been put into the or, or just, repository. Yeah, you know, we're just basically clicking on each of the things and getting the file, uh, you know, a, a short pop up with all the file names that have that license. Wait, are you thinking like the phasology output? No, not particularly, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, because I'm thinking that's kind of how, right, they give you the license, right? And then you can they click give you the on license, it. They give you the license, they give you things. And just, then you can click on it and see all the files. But, that you know, like with the Apache 2 sitting there with the license declared, yeah. you know, I would expect that probably about 70, if we've got 73%, um, I'd say the... I see. We, we're probably sitting at, um, you know, 95% Apache 2. So of the so basically files with declared licenses that seventy one sixty six, yeah, you would want to know what percentage of that is Apache in this case, right? Okay, um, does that make sense, Matt? Yeah, we're um, we're in the process of getting getting some information together from people about how to what fundamental changes we need to make to our scanner DoSox, and okay. that's a really good idea for um, how we're going to collect that data from Nomos. Yeah. You've also got a uh, JSON output for an SBOM, and I'm looking at that and trying to understand it. Um, and so <laughs> I'll give you a heads up that SBOM is a very loaded term these days. We've heard yeah. that. <laughs> Jessica gave us a little warning. <laughs> so I, I, unless you're, you know, um, <laughs> Wanting to wade into a pile of something? Yeah. Yeah, basically. Because um, I'm sort of seeing some of the SPDX fields, but I'm also seeing other things here. And I'm just trying to, you know, I'm looking at what I, I just sort of clicked on it so I can see what it says. And it's something I'm having a hard time figuring out how to parse <laughs> a little bit. I'm not quite sure how, because it looks like what you've got here under that SBOM data is the data that's being used to populate your screen to some extent. We actually had a lot more data available to us too, but it makes it document those like 10 megabytes for text file. So we didn't want to use all of that. Yeah, well, so I can say um, the selective use of this, um, definitely do not call it a software bill of materials then. <laughs> that's all I'm going to say. Because with these things, it is 10, like, you know, it is 10 megabytes if you actually have this stuff all there. Right now, what you've got here is, it looks like it's the licenses and then some of the package level information. Um, so it's basically, you know, you've got, looks like you've just got overview information. It's kind of what I'm reading. I can and, agree with that, yeah. You know, I'm also seeing a variety of things that are... Interesting. <laughs> so, like, say, if Matt, if you wanted to generate the full thing, I could sort of take a pass through and give you content comments about where there's things that are looking weird, a tad weird to me. But okay, your... and we also um, it, it would also be nice to have an example of a document that I could base this because I'm going to be changing the tag value and the JSON output to be okay. um, more reflective of what's a kind of a solid S bomb. Or not, yeah, maybe sure. not even an SBOM, but a solid document for SPDX. Uh, so getting an example, that would be great too. Uh, just a second, I'll give you a link because Wind River has, a, has basically put their whole uh, Linux distro up as SPDX tag value documents. Awesome. And really what we do is we create a tag value and then we parse it out to JSON. So that's all we need. Yeah. So... Oh, let me find the link in the right window. Sorry. Is it an SPDX file? Yeah. We've been something? generating it for like yeah. guess, what, five years? Yeah. So, so I mean that to me that to me that would make a lot of sense instead of an S bomb, maybe just call it SPDX. <laughs> well, like I say yeah, I I think call it call it as it is at this point in time. Uh, S bombs seem to, like I say, are overloaded baggage to some extent. Yeah. Um, can we just share this in the chat? 
Okay. There you go. So you can go down to Linux curl. It doesn't have a Zephyr one in there, but if you wanted an example, you can probably go and take that and um, pick up the same package and push it through and then be able to compare. So we could change the name to a document with information you might find relevant. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> or whatever the acronym for that is. <laughs> you know, basically, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> um, contents, package, like, you know, package content, whatever. Package facts. Gee, that's what SPDX started with. What if Bag of software. Wait, what was that? It started out with package facts? Yeah, I used to call it, yeah. The project started what? off being called package facts, and then the marketing people got I engaged. And then, I had no idea. Yeah. Uh, I gave a talk in, in, I guess it was in New Zealand, as part of yeah. LCA, and I, it was in the business track. And that was the first ideas towards getting um, SPDX created. I like that name. I call it package facts. So just package, package, package facts there. <laughs> I like that too because it's it's also much less committal than software bill of materials. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, well, I picked up a little bit of history today. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I seem to be full of it, but whatever. <laughs> That's great. But yeah. All right. Yeah, I mean, what you provided from Wind River. I mean that Matt, you can. I mean, this is what. Yeah, I mean, this is what DoSox does anyway, pretty much. So, okay. Um, the other thing that's happening as well, Matt, is that, you know, I sympathize with the desire to make it JSON, is um, there's some translation tools going on between the different formats, and one of which is to JSON. So go, you know, um, there's work that was done in the summer by Google Summer of Code, so there may be stuff that's pretty close, reusable. Okay, but we'll cool. be making We'll be making JSON and YAML first class formats for the SPX language, in addition to tag value with the 2.2 release. Awesome. Okay. So all your favorite tools will work with it then, which is part of the goal. Yeah, because I think the format and my stuff, I just used a bunch of regex. So that's probably a lot more solid than what I've done in Scalable. Yeah, yeah like I said, uh, the SPDX tools repo has got some of this and then, you know, Chime in on the tech list if you get lost with it, and Gary will hopefully jump in. He's managing that stuff. Or put a query, in, you know, put something in the GitHub issue if it's not clear. But I like the coverage. Forks is interesting. Huh. The forks, you, where did you pull the forks stats from on the risk metrics? Gabe, Sean. Will we pull what? Fork stats. Fork stats. Forks is coming straight out of our um, met Gabe, is that coming from the GitHub metadata for Forks? Um I think that's, it is. Well, where does the repo info worker? That's the GitHub metadata. So repo okay. info. So we have a we have um, so one of the ways we validate that we have all the data that we're supposed to have is uh, GitHub has metadata for all of its stuff. And so the, the forks data here is coming from that metadata, which just says, here's the total number of forks on this repo. And we gather that over time, GitHub doesn't provide a time series of that data. So the longer we have a, an instance running of Augur, the, the longer our history of their forks up and down goes. GitHub doesn't provide that history organically. Okay. Well. I'm sort of looking at also the committers per week and the numbers look weird there to me. We don't have 3,000 committers per week. So there's an error in that chart. Yeah, there's an error there. Um, like I say, we're now at 544 committers overall for the project, or at least depending which way you want to look at for the at least that for itself. Um, and so seeing something like 3,000 looks like a little bit mm, question mark. Hmm. So it says 3,000 committers? Yeah, it says committers by week. Uh, can we go back to sharing mode? No, no, I can, I can go there myself. Okay. Oh, what did I do here? <laughs> All right, let me go back to what I was doing. Well, this is really cool, Sean. Oh my, oh my, oh my, you know, oh my, uh, <laughs> Correctness issues aside. <laughs> no, 
I'll, um, I'll, take a look at, I'll take a look at that. I think I may have, um, I was updating your instance and not I'll put a screenshot in the chat. I see that. Okay, second. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm committers by week. Yeah, let's find out where that's coming from. That, that's definitely way off. Yeah. Um, that's definitely way off. So either the endpoint's off or the graph is off. My guess is that we're summarizing something wrong in the graph. Um, but we'll figure we'll at the bottom of it. By the way, if you find any major issues, I definitely stress putting an issue in on our um, on our auger page. Just going to plug that. But um, <laughs> I think I put like a four in in the last three days. <laughs> okay. Well, like I said, I'm home this week, so I'm actually starting to actually catch up on the lot of things. So I'll hopefully do that. Yeah. So uh, if you want to put the link, oh, the, where where do you want me to put the issues? If you want to just put the link to where you want me to push issues, I'll do that. Oh, sure. Yeah. And um, yeah, I'd put the branch before it too, because all these are coming from Dev, I think. Okay. Okay, cool. Got it. Thanks. I do like how you've um, displayed the CI best practices stuff. That's nice. Well done, Matt. Yeah. Thanks. That will go fine. Any other auger related questions or things that we should work on? Uh, I will hopefully join in on, if not the next meeting, the one after. Is the next meeting, is it next week or is it two weeks from now? We do it weekly. Weekly, okay. So I'm going to probably be traveling this time next week. Okay. But, um, I'll join in the week after and I'll try to put issues in as I spot things as I'm playing around and noodling and ask questions. Cool. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Kate. Thank you, Kate. Okay. I'm going to probably drop now, too. All right. Bye, Bye all. Gabe, we didn't get to any of your things. <laughs> oh, no, that's okay. That's kind of why I wrote them down. I didn't really, uh, I feel like no one would need to go into the gory details of the restructuring of our I actually files. think it'll be interesting at some point, Gabe. I think people came with other questions in mind, and that's good. So let's just keep this thing that you prepared for next time. Okay. That sounds I think it's, it's really interesting. Um, how it, this is about how the API is built. And I think one of the things that we've learned from new developers is that the, we had everything in a single file, auger db.py, and we refactored the main data presentation or data serving API files into several organized by the functions like commits and issues. So that if I want to build a new metric, it's now less intimidating for new developers to go and do that. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. Talking about it next week would make a ton of sense. And I think that's kind of what this call is exactly about. Yeah. Is getting a little bit into the gory details. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. And we gave, I sent you a Slack message really as an aside. There's a error in the current front end build. Uh, An NPM okay. error. I just, I just slacked it to you. I'm going to drop off. All right. I think we're done. Right. Thanks, Bye. everyone. See you guys. Thank you. Yep. Yeah. Bye. Um, hey Matt, are you still there, Gabe?